Hey student, how are you today? I am Teacher Morrell, your Science 8 teacher. I am happy to serve you and bring you fun and exciting lessons in Science Grade 8. I hope you already prepare your pens, record book, and modules. Be sure you are at your most comfortable seats as we go through our discussions. Well, are you ready for today's lesson? That's good! Our most essential learning competency today will be using models or illustration and explain how movement along fault generates earthquake. So let's get started! The first part of our lesson is checking on your previous knowledge about earthquake. I will be flashing statements on your screen and you will determine whether they are true or false. Are you ready? So here's your number one question. Philippines is located along the Pacific Ring of Fire. True or false? Excellent! The Ring of Fire refers to the region around the Pacific Ocean that is commonly hit by an earthquake and volcanic eruptions. Some of the countries are in Pacific Ring of Fire are Japan, Indonesia, and Philippines. Okay, number two question. Earthquakes are not associated with fault. You are right! The statement is false. Earthquakes occur when rocks along a fault suddenly move. Number 3. A fault is a break in the Earth's crust and along the break, no movement has taken place. Correct! That is false. A fault is a break in the Earth's crust and along the break, significant movement has taken place. But how do faults produce quakes? We will learn that later. Number 4. Energy formed inside the Earth exerts a force on the rock. That is right! Energy from inside the Earth exerts a force on the rocks along a fold. This energy from inside the Earth makes the rocks bend. Using a model later, you will see how this happens. Number 5. When a portion of the land sink, a mountain is formed. That is right! The statement is false. Mountain is a large mass of land that rises above the ground, while the valley is a lower part of the land between two higher parts which might be mountains or hills. Did you get the correct answer? Then you are doing a great job! Earthquake is used to describe the sudden shaking and trembling caused by the sudden release of energy from the inside the earth. Try to look at this picture. What do you see? Why do we need to learn earthquakes? Strong earthquakes have caused countless deaths all over the world, and no one can stop quakes from happening. No wonder scientists have been working very hard to find a way to predict when an earthquake occurs. The study of an earthquake is called seismology. Scientists who studied earthquake is called seismologists. In the Philippines, the national agency concerned in monitoring earthquake and fault movement is the PhilVox, or the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. There are things that people can do to avoid or reduce the loss of life and damage to property. The first step is to have a clear understanding in the occurrence of earthquake. Now, let us watch this news clip and try to think carefully about it.
Walumpo at apat na barangay mula sa mga syudad at probinsyang ito ay nanganganibyanikin ng isang malakas na lindol. What would you feel if you are living in these areas? An earthquake is one of the most frightening things that anyone can ever experience. You grow up believing that the earth is rock solid and steady, but then the ground suddenly shakes and you do not know what to believe anymore. Earthquakes are associated with faults. When a fault suddenly moves, an earthquake occurs. Do you know what a fault is? Let us perform this activity, a faulty setup. In this activity, we will be needing two sheets of cardboard, fine sand, ruler, and sheets of paper or newspaper. The first thing to do is spread the sheet on the table. Then, arrange the two sheets of cardboard edge to edge. Pour sand on the boundary of the two sheets. With the ruler, make two parallel lines. Now, move the sheets slowly in the opposite direction. Now, let us try to answer these questions. As you move the sheet, what is formed in the sand? A crack is formed in the sand. Or we could also say that a break is formed in the sand. What happens to the lines? We can see that the lines move, shifted, or displaced. Try to look at this picture carefully. Maybe you are thinking that the road was originally in one piece, but the road is no longer continuous. There is a cut across the road and now there are two sections. One section has moved with respect to the other. Compare what you see in the picture and what you saw in the activity. Is there something in the picture that looks like what was formed in the activity? Do you see anything similar? Based on the activity and the picture, you can probably guess what a fault is by now. A fault is a break or fracture in the Earth's crust. And along the break, significant movement has taken place. The word break refers to the crack in the ground. The word crust refers to the outermost layer of the earth. We live on the surface of the crust. Significant movement means the rock has been displaced, shifted considerably. Now, get a box and cut it in the middle. Place one box on the other one. Put sand in the nested boxes. Shake the box side to side so that the surface of the sand will become level. Now, we will slowly pull the sides of the boxes and observe. We can see that the two parallel cracks form in the sand. Continue to pull the box covered and observe. The sand in the middle of the cracks subside or move down, forming a depression. This simulated what happens when the ground is pulled apart by forces within the earth, the fault formed. A portion of the land sinks and a valley is formed. Now, let us reassemble the box covers as before. Do not forget to make the surface of the sand flat. This time, let us push the sides of the box covers towards each other. Observe what happens. As we can see, the opposite happens. Instead of the sand sinking, the sand forms a tiny ridge. Unfortunately, this model do not show a crack in the sand that would represent a fault. In real world, when the ground is squeezed by a forces from inside the earth, a portion of the land is pushed up and mountains are formed. There are three types of faults. The normal fault, the reverse fault, and the strike slip fault. The normal fault, the rock layers in the earth's crust, are pulled apart 
and gravity causes one section to move downward in relation to the other. While in the reverse fold, the rock layer in the Earth's crust are squeezed together. The force pushed one section towards the relation of the other. The strike-slip fold forms when a rock layer on opposite sides of the fold slide past each other horizontally. How do fold produce quakes? Now that you have an idea how fold looks like, let us learn how earthquakes occur along folds. Let us do another activity. Stick and slip. This will show us how earthquakes are related to fault. In this activity, two small boxes are needed. The cartoons of fruit juices are packaged in are perfect scotch tape or masking tape, rubber band, and paper clip. You can also try this at home. Let us start. Attach the rubber band to the paper clip. Then attach the paper clip to one end of the box. Place the boxes side by side. Then tape lightly the two boxes together. Remember, do not stick the tape of the boxes too much. The tape is meant to come off. Then put a toy house on the box with a rubber band. Hold the box without the rubber band in place. With your other hand, slowly pull on the rubber band. The rubber band should be pulled forward and horizontally, not sideways, upward and downward. It is expected that the box will not move at first because it is taped to the other box. What happens to the rubber band? You are correct! The rubber band stretches. Keep on pulling on the rubber band. What happens to the box attached to the rubber band? You are right! The box jerks forward. What happened to the house? The house falls over. Which is fault in this setup? If you think that the fault is the boundary of two boxes, then you are correct. Then, as the box jerks forward, this simulates that the sudden movement that occurs along a fault. In this activity, the tape represents friction in real life. Do you still remember what friction is? You are right! Friction is the resistance to the motion of one object moving relative to another. If the tape is too sticky, it will never come off, no matter how much rubber band is pulled. But since we tape it on just enough, then the box jerks free. Imagine as ground and the boundary between them as fault. In real world, this is what happens. Energy from the inside the earth exerts a force on the rocks along fault. But the rocks do not move right away because of friction. The roughness of the rocks keeps them from slipping past each other. But when the limit is reached, the rocks suddenly slip and an earthquake occurs. Some scientists describe this process as a stick and slip. At first, the rocks are stuck together due to friction. Later, the rocks suddenly slip, generating an earthquake. Every time a fault moves, the earth quakes. In our activity, there was a sudden jerk but no shaking. The boxes did not shake as in a real earthquake. Can you make your own fault model? So, what materials will you use? Can you demonstrate to us your fault model? Although major earthquake can kill thousands of people and can cost a lot of money for damage to repair, earthquakes can also have a positive benefits for humans. It helps us to understand nature. It also allows the scientists to study the Earth's inner layer. And understanding earthquakes helps us to prepare and respond to such devastating events. If we have a clear understanding of the occurrence of earthquake, we can avoid or reduce the loss of life and damage to property. 
Let us have a self-check. Try to answer the following questions. Grab a pen and paper and write down your answer. Are you ready? Now, let us check your answers. Congratulations! I'm sure you learned something new today. I am Teacher Morrow, your Science 8 teacher. See you next lesson!